Hi guys, so today we're gonna to be making our practice sakuli. Uh, what you have here are two popsicle sticks that were hot glued together, as well as a pretty long string that was tied to the back of these popsicle sticks. If you notice, I tied them, if you look at the popsicle sticks as an X, they're tied basically in a vertical line uh, between the two popsicle sticks. We're going to be wrapping um, the sukuli first before we start weaving it, but I wanna to talk to you a bit about a tip I have. Uh, a lot of times students will just start trying to weave and with a really long string here. Uh, for me, it's really much easier if you bunch up the string uh, to get started so that you know that you, so that you're not too long on the string when you're weaving. You have a lot more control of it. Um, what we're going to do is I want you to put the sakuli so that it's an X, basically. You're going to have a vertical line coming up and down it, and we're going to wrap it up and down and around. So one, we're going to wrap it five times like this. So you're going to hold it like an X. You're going to be wrapping it up over and around, over and around, over and around five times. So I wrapped it once, two, three, four, Five. We always do this at the beginning of making a sakuli because we want to actually have string in the middle and not just a piece of the sticks of wood there. So once you wrap it five times going up and down, you're actually, notice that it's in, in an X position. You're actually going to turn it so that it's in another X position and wrap it now five times the other way. So notice now I have these these lines going horizontal. Now I'm going to wrap it five times vertically. So one, two, three, four, five. Once you've wrapped it both directions, you're going to place the sikuli down and just notice and make sure that the string is coming underneath these two sticks in the right hand quadrant. So I'm going to just wait for a moment as you set that up. Your sakuli should look just like mine, basically an X with five wrappings <coughs> each, and then the string is coming down into the bottom right-hand quadrant here. And once you have that, I want you to pick up your sakuli and hold it on the bottom. It looks like a plus sign, and I want you to grab your string, and remember I want you to bunch it up so that you're really close. Look at how close I am with the string to the stick. Now, I have a really specific method of weaving this, and sometimes it takes a bit of time to do it, uh, but I want you to watch at me first before you start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap over what I call two sticks. So the one, two. Watch me. I'm going to go over two. Notice I haven't turned my sticks at all, and it still looks like a plus sign. So this hand down here, all it does is hold these sticks as I go over two, under one, I grab it with my fingers up here, and then I turn it. Notice this hand down here, it never really moves. It just holds it as a plus sign all the time. Notice again, I'm back in the bottom right-hand quadrant. So I'm going to go start this again, and it's really repetitive. You become like a machine. I'm gonna go over two sticks, one, two, under one stick, grab it, turn it and then start again. Again, I'm back in the bottom right-hand quadrant. Notice too that I'm not gonna go right down the middle when I go over two sticks. I'm gonna go to the side because I'm gonna be building slowly up on the side. So I'm gonna go over two sticks, one, two. I'm gonna go under one stick. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna turn it. I call this stick, the uh, this hand, the helping hand, because basically it just sits there and holds the sticks while this hand is doing the work. Go over two sticks, under one, grab it, turn it. Over two sticks, under one, grab it, turn it. Over two, under one, grab it, turn it. I always keep my my string really close again so that it's I have a big bunch, but I'm holding this part tight. Notice that I'm constantly kind of tightening it after I turn it every time so that it doesn't become really loose. And I'm also making sure I'm going to the side of what I just did. So the last string I did was right there. I'm gonna go right next to it right now. So over two, under one, grab it, turn it. Over two, 
under one, grab it, turn it. Over two, under one, grab it, turn it. Now, what I'm saying when I'm saying over two is over two sticks, right? So I'm going over two sticks, one, two, going under one stick. I'm grabbing it on the top with this hand and then I'm turning it. Over two sticks, under one stick, grab it, turn it. Over two sticks, under one stick, grab it, turn it. Something that people sometimes have a problem with is that they'll go right down the middle. That's what I'm talking about. You wanna go right next to what you just did. Over two sticks, under one stick, grab it, turn it. Remember that what the problem sometimes people have is they start turning it uh, with this hand. You wanna make sure you go over two sticks, under one stick, grab it, turn it. And you just keep going like that. Over two, under one, grab it, turn it. I like to say it to myself because it helps me to remember what I'm doing. Over two, under one, grab it, turn it. Two, one, grab it, turn it. Two, one, grab it, turn it. Two, one, grab it, turn it. Over two, under one, grab it, turn it. You're gonna keep weaving until you start seeing your sequoia take shape and really all the way to the end. As you get closer to the end of your string, you're going to consider tying it off. Because if, I, for example, I wove until the string was done, this would just not, it would basically just come apart, right? I could just take it apart. So you need to eventually tie a knot around one of these sticks. So I'm gonna tie one around this stick. And if you need, I actually, I'm gonna back up a little bit and tie one around this stick because it seems to be the longest. And that's a lot of extra, extra string. I don't necessarily need it for anything, but I also don't want the end of the string to be super short because that might be hard for me to tie a knot with. So what you do when you're done with this is you're going to wrap around the stick and then you're going to make a loop. So notice that I'm making the loop this time around the stick. There's the loop and the stick is inside of it. I basically, after my last weaving, went around the stick and then made my loop. I'm going to take this string and keep the loop around the stick I'm going to take this string and put it underneath the loop and through it. So I'm tying a knot to this stick right here. And I've already tied part of the knot. And then once you tie it like that, you're going to take this string and go make another loop. So basically the loop is here and then go back underneath the string where you tied the knot to and pull it up. And you've tied a knot on that piece of wood. So it's a little bit loose. You can try to push it down a little bit if you need to. Um, and then you're done. And if you then want to use this string to hang your sequoia, you can by coming over to this end and tying a knot around this side. This is a little bit different because I can make a loop. Remember that making tying knots are all about making loops, right? I'm gonna make a loop. So I'm gonna put this string over. So I'm gonna take the loop and put the string over and then I'm going to put the string through the loop and pull it tight. I'm gonna make another loop by putting the string over and then go under the loop and pull it tight. This way you already have sort of a hanging string using the string you had before. And I'm going to cut that string, whatever you're cutting string. I know it's kind of annoying to have a little tag here, but you don't wanna cut right near the knot or else it might undo itself, okay? So at this point you have a little sequoia and you can hang it up if you want to.